In this video, I'll provide an overview of how to do your descriptive statistics. Now, I have a data set here from Montreal, and uh, in a previous video, I explained how to do pivot tables in detail. I will do another round of pivot tables here just as a refresher, um, but I recommend watching that other video, uh, which goes slower and um, with more explanation. So here I am. I'll go ahead and click somewhere on my data set so Excel knows I want to work with it. And um, I'll go ahead and click Insert, Pivot Tables. Now, um, by now you should have looked at the different variables so that you know what kind of information you have in your data set. But if you don't recall what each variable is, make sure to check out the data dictionary that's posted in Canvas that explains each um, variable's purpose. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the neighborhood cleansed and drag and drop that into the rows box here. And then what I'll do is I'll take the neighborhood cleansed and drag and drop it again into the values. Recall the values are numbers, and so they're going to give me some kind of value. Um, in this case, it's going to give me the count of listings by neighborhood. And so some have more or less. And so what I'd like to do is I'm going to click on any of these numbers just so I can have it selected and right click sort largest to smallest because I would want to focus my business somewhere where there's a lot of tourism or in this case Airbnb listings. So I can see ooh, I've got a couple of neighborhoods here that um, have a lot of listings. So for instance, um, one graph that I could do is I could do um, a bar chart that compares the top neighborhoods in Montreal. So I would um, highlight the pieces of information that I want carefully. Maybe I'll do anything with over 100 listings. You could do the top 10, you could do the top 5, whatever you want to share, that's what you could do. So I've highlighted what I want. I'm going to right click copy and then right click paste over here where it's blank. Make it wide open so I can see what I'm doing. So one way to do that is to drag the lines or you can double click and that'll open it up. Now to do my uh, first descriptive statistics, which is a bar chart, I will um, highlight my information, go up to insert, and then towards the middle we have some charts to choose from. The bar chart is the most popular straightforward chart that you can use. And it's helpful when comparing qualitative data. And you're like, this is a number, how is this qualitative? Because recall, this is the count of the words. So all the pivot table did was count every time Villa Marie was shown in the data set. It counted every time Verdun was counted. So this is considered nominal data. We learned this back in chapter one. It's the most basic kind of data. It's a name. These are names of neighborhoods. And all we did was count how many listings are in these neighborhoods. So um, that's why a bar chart would be helpful for this. So I'll go ahead and click on my bar chart option. Now you could also do it like sideways if you prefer, but I'm going to do vertical. Uh, if you want to get fancy, you could do a 3D. I'll keep it simple. So there's my bar chart. Um, you'll always want to label the bar chart so that when someone looks at it, they know what this means. I'm going to call this um, top neighborhoods in Montreal. So I'll go ahead and click away. And it's kind of small, so I'll go ahead and just make it bigger. And whenever we've got data like this, it's helpful to add data labels. So I'm going to right click on any of the bars and add data labels. And so all it did was it added the value or the count that we had in our um, information over here. So that way, when the audience is looking at or investors are looking at this chart, they don't have to guess why make them have to think so hard, right? So that's why I like adding data labels to um, avoid any confusion with the numbers. So that's going to be my first descriptive statistics that I would use. And this is helpful because, well, now this is going to help me decide, hmm, where should I put my business? I could put my business in Villa Marie or Les Plateau Mont Royal, um, two very popular locations with a lot of Airbnb listings, meaning people that are visiting the area. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use Villa Marie because that's the most popular one. So I'll uh, click away. I'm going to go ahead and post this into the discussion board. That's my first chart. Um, now I'm in Villa Marie. So uh, I only want to analyze this neighborhood. 
So uh, I'm going to click on the 1914 because that's the count of Villa Marie neighborhoods from our original data set. And if I double click on it, it's going to pull only the Villa Marie data into a new tab. And I can double check by going to the column D and doing the drop down. And I can say, yep, it's only Villa Marie. Fantastic. Now, I'm curious about the data, so I'm going to take a look a little bit. I'll take a look at uh, property types. We've got quite a few. We've got entire rooms, private rooms, hotels, shared rooms. Um, under room type, I can see there's entire home, hotel room, private room, shared room. Okay, taking a look at this data, it's going to make me want to make some more decisions. So preferably, um, I want to focus on people who are renting an entire home or apartment. Um, I think that they're most more likely to be staying longer in the area and um, would want to do a bike and wine tour, uh, which is my business. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create another pivot table only using Villa Marie that will help me organize what I want. So um, I'm clicking somewhere on the data set, going to insert pivot table. I'll hit, go ahead and hit OK. And um, I am going to do property type and drag that down into the rows. Now, um, as I mentioned before, I don't want to necessarily focus on people that are just um, renting a room. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the room type and I'm gonna drop it into filters right here. And you'll see that the room type has appeared above the pivot table. And if I do a drop down here, I can see my options. I'll check select multiple items and now I can pick and choose what I want. So I'm going to uncheck the other options, the individual rooms that I'm not targeting as my customer base. And rather, I'm only interested in people staying in entire homes or apartments or um, of Air Airbnb listings. Different businesses have different purposes. Maybe you are looking for people who are um, in smaller accommodations and you would prefer to include all the rooms and maybe remove the entire home and apartment option. Um, or you want to target all the customers and so you would um, have left them all in your data set and you wouldn't need to filter. So these are the decisions you want to make um, and play around, right? Like you could play around pivot tables, see what it looks like, um, and then see what makes sense. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. And now that leaves me with a more manageable list of uh, property types. So I'll, um, you'll notice anytime um, the pivot table disappears, it just means you need to click back on the pivot table to turn it back on. But if it ever disappeared, look for it up in the tabs here where it says pivot table. And then um, you want to see, make sure that field list option is selected. So um, see, it goes away and then I click on it and it comes back. So. All right, um, now I want to know how many um, property types there are. So I'll go ahead and drag and drop the property type into my values box here. And now I can see um, the number of listings that are entire condos, homes, lofts, places, etc. So um, because I'm only looking at entire properties, I want to know what proportion our condos or townhomes. So this would be great for a pie chart because this is parts of a whole and the whole being um, entire listings. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight my data, right click copy and then right click and paste it somewhere over in the blank area here. Uh, make sure it's big so I can see everything and making sure it all looks good. I will highlight Go to insert, and then I'm going to look for pie charts towards the bottom here. You can always hover, and it'll usually tell you. I always recommend doing um, a 2D pie chart. While 3D can look cool, it can skew your pie slices, especially if the slices are very similar in size. I actually got that feedback once from an executive when they, they, they asked, hey, I can't tell the difference between two of your pie slices because of the way it's angled. So ever since then, I've always done um, 2D. We need to make this more useful for people to see. Uh, there are some chart styles up here you can choose from. So that's one way you can format your chart. 
you can always add those features by going right click on the pie chart and adding data labels. So it added the numbers that I had for my data set. And then if I um, click on any of those numbers and right click, I can ch format my data labels. I can change them to something more useful. Like I prefer percents instead of value. So I'll uncheck value. I'll make sure the percentage is checked and I can see, yep, those are all percents. So you can do it manually um, or you can do it using the chart styles that exist um, in uh, the chart design tool. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and use the chart design tool just because it's prettier. And um, remember, we always want to have a chart title. Now pie charts can be a tricky thing because when you look at the pie chart with percentages, well, you don't know what the count is. You don't know what the sample size is because 65% of 10 is very different than 65% of 1,000. So what you'll want to do is you can see over here on the left, we have our total. There are 1,670 listings in our data. So this right here is our sample size, also known as our N. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I put that in the chart title. So I've named my chart property types in Villa Marie. And in parentheses, I put the sample size or N equals 1,670. Now, when someone sees this chart, they'll know, oh, okay, um, the entire condo that is 21% of 1670. And that'll give folks a better idea of how much data you're working with and um, what that portion of my pie, the slice, represents. Now, if you feel like the um, data labels are small, if you click on it, you can always go up to the font menu and just like make them bigger, right? You can pick a size, make it super big um, or shrink it a little bit. And then of course you can also uh, stretch out the chart. Now, I think some of my numbers are um, a little smooshed here. So another thing you can do is if you right click on the graph and go to format data series, and you'll see that there's an option to angle your slices. So I don't know, I'm just moving stuff and seeing if anything looks better angled a certain way. Okay, sure, that looks somewhat better. <laughs> what you can also do is um, if you carefully click on just like one of the labels, you can always move it around. Like I'm gonna, let me move this 9% out a little bit further. There we go. Now I can see that uh, there's a 0% at on that yellow entire place. There's my 9%, my 1%, 21. There's another 1%, and then I can like move my 3% out. So you can move the labels around just for a little bit easier viewing. Right? You can move the slices, you can move the data labels. Um, so play around with your pie chart. Descriptive statistics is a bit of a science and a bit of an art. So you want it to be aesthetically and visually pleasing, um, but the science behind it is like the pivot tables and the numbers. Let me go back to that bar chart that we had over here, because just as a reminder, another thing you could do if you wanted to was um, if I go to my neighborhoods and turn it back on the pivot table, I could have done a price analysis, right? So um, I can take price and drag and drop it into the values here. So I'm going to drop that in here and recall some of price is not really useful for me because all I did was add up the numbers. I'm going to double click on sum of price and turn that into average. So I'll hit OK. And then now I have the average price here. Now what I can do, because I've already copy pasted my information over my graphs good here, I can get rid of the neighborhood cleansed um, from the count. So I'll drag and move that away. And then there's my price. Let's go ahead and turn this all into like accounting. So I'll highlight the column B and hit the comma. All right, so now it's a little bit easier to see. And what I can do is I, uh, again, I'll sort it, right? So I'll right click on any of the numbers and sort largest to smallest. Unfortunately, that made my accounting go away. So I'll format it again. So I'll highlight my B and click my comma. Okay, so now I have like a new set of top neighborhoods, but this time it's by the highest price. So I can do another bar chart if I want of like these neighborhoods. Just, you know, right click and copy, paste it 
somewhere and then make another bar chart just like that. And that would be kind of cool to show. Um, and look, fortunately, Villa Marie, which I'd already decided I wanted to do, is in the top uh, in terms of price. So that's good to know. This means I can probably charge more for my wine and um, tour business if I wanted to. So another uh, variable you might want to analyze. So I'm going to go ahead and take number of reviews and drag and drop it into the values box here. And recall number of reviews just means, hey, um, someone stayed at this Airbnb listing and provided a review. So the higher the number, meaning a, that means a lot of people have stayed at uh, the Airbnbs in that area. So this is actually really good to know in terms of like volume and popularity of something. So again, I will go ahead and right click um, on that column and do sort largest to smallest. Wow. And I can see these are by top neighborhoods with a lot of reviews, meaning a lot of people have stayed in these uh, neighborhoods at these Airbnbs and put a review. So again, Villa Marie for me is in that top number. And so I'm really happy about doing Villa Marie. Um, so this will be helpful for you to see. Uh, maybe you wanna know the volume of tourists that are coming into your area. Maybe you wanna know the average price for your area. Maybe you wanna compare which areas are um, have the most Airbnb listings. Uh, you might, you might wanna be uh, analyzing the property types. So just from you know the original data set, you have so many variables you can choose from. Not all of them are useful for your project, for your business. So this is where you will want to critically examine what makes sense. And you had identified a couple of variables in your proposal, um, but you really won't know what's useful until you start to make these graphs and charts and see, and see what the data tells us. So if you have any questions, feel free to schedule some office hours with me or send me an email, send me your data, and I'm happy to walk you through it.